Hey you guys, my name is Natasha Lunt and welcome back to the Eccentric Beings Podcast. Woo! I want to thank each and every one of you guys who have come along to join us on today. And I thank all of my uh, supporters who have been with me from the beginning. I thank those that have come along to join us on the Eccentrics Being Strain Ride. I'm so excited to know where God has taken us. And as always, I dedicate these videos, these podcasts to my future husband, future kids, future grands. I love you guys from the bottom of my heart. And to all of those who are listening and watching today, I pray that you guys find your purpose, that you find what God has called for you to do and be all that God has called for you to be. So today's topic is going to be a nursing topic. Um, so today I want to talk about alcohol and opiate withdrawal symptoms or withdrawal. So being a nurse, I've had the experience of seeing people who have been going through withdrawal symptoms and it's not a pretty sight at all. Um, and these people you know, when they come in, they're very sick. You know, when I talk about withdrawal symptoms, people who've been on alcohol, who drink beer, who've been on opiates like narcotics, uh, Valium, benzodiazepines, um, you name it, they've been on it. And they come into the hospital very sick and they need help, you know, and they have to volunteer to be able to come in and say, I need the help. You know, sometimes families may want to reach out and say, I want to bring my family in. I'm concerned and I want them to get the help. But it has to be up to the patient to determine if they need help or not. So um, it's good to be able to have detox centers in your area where people can go to for help if they're trying to detox from alcohol or opiates or benzodiazepines or anything of that nature. So today I kind of just want to discuss some main symptoms that you can see with patients with withdrawal symptoms. So typically with these patients, we use CYWA scoring. It's C-I-W-A. And usually CYWA scoring is every four hours. And it's just a scale uh, to determine whether a patient is going through withdrawal symptoms, how bad the withdrawal symptoms are, and whether they're going to need medication to help them. So not all patients score high enough to get anything for the withdrawal symptoms because some patients don't have the symptoms. Some patients do good, some patients don't. So one of the, like I said, the CWA scoring is every four hours and usually a score of eight and above the patient is eligible for uh, medication for withdrawal symptoms. So it just depends. So the patient may come into the hospital with alcohol withdrawal. So it's trying to get off alcohol. So they are usually put on Valium. If a patient comes into the hospital and they're trying to get off opiates or let's just say benzodiazepine, they may be put on phenobarbital. And these medications, you know, are for their symptoms. So part of the CWA scoring, we're going to ask questions like, um, do you have any nausea and vomiting? Most patients come in with nausea and vomiting. They don't feel good. And due to the nausea and vomiting, they're going to have a loss of appetite, which is another symptom that we look out for. So as the tech or as the nurse or as the provider, if you're watching this as well, you know, you want to make sure that you're monitoring their intake and output. You know, but if they don't have a good intake of fluids, let's just say, that's going to plummet their blood pressure. It's going to lower their blood pressure lower. So we got to make sure that we're, you know, always taught to force fluids, but we're not forcing them to drink, right? But we want to encourage them to drink more fluids. That, in a sense, will also help them with their blood pressure, gets their blood pressure back up. Because some of these patients will be on a medication called clonidine. And clonidine is an antihypertensive medication, and that could actually lower the blood pressure. We want to also make sure that they're keeping their blood pressure maintained because this medication like clonidine can actually lower the blood pressure. So it kind of has this effect of it helps and then it can, you know, have a, an adverse effect as well. So nausea and vomiting, um, loss of appetite. Most of them do not want to eat. Most of them are on regular diets. Most of them can walk around, do all types of stuff, go to the bathroom themselves. But, you know, don't expect them to pretty much have a bowel movement or, you know, if they're not eating um, properly because they're they're not going to want to eat. Another part of the CY score is tremor. So we're looking at hands and feet, you know, we're taking, telling them to stick out their hands and then their hands might shake like this. 
their feet may do the same thing. That, those are what we call tremors. Now, if a patient, I had a patient come in one time who had Parkinson's and Parkinson's disease can cause tremors as well. So you kind of have to use your nursing judgment to determine, okay, is the tremors due to the withdrawal symptoms or is the tremors due to the Parkinson's? And then the patient was alert enough to tell me, you know, they're thinking it's due to their Parkinson's disease because when they get, you know, anxious and nervous and stuff, they start to tremor. So you kind of have to use your nursing judgment on the part of that, but tremors is another part of the CY scoring. Another big thing is sweating. A lot of patients sweat a lot. So whatever floor that you may be on, usually your techs and nurses can do it as well. We wanna make sure that we're changing these uh, bed sheets daily. We wanna make sure that um, we're giving them, like I said, fluids, um, because they're gonna be sweating a whole lot. So we wanna monitor if they're sweating, we wanna feel the, uh, the hand, their hands, you know, maybe the palms. And then we're gonna also wanna take and go behind their neck and rub the back of their, or the nape of their neck. And that's gonna tell us if they're sweating too, because that's an area that they sweat a lot, it's the back of their neck. So we wanna monitor for that as well. Another part of the CY is headaches. Most patients will complain of headaches. One of the main, uh, we'll say pain medication that they give will be uh, Tylenol. Most people get Tylenol either for pain or fever, make sure the order says pain or fever. Um, but usually Tylenol for pain, they may do uh, 650 milligrams of Tylenol, or they may do one gram or, um, or a thousand milligrams of Tylenol. It just depends on what the provider orders. But typically Tylenol is a medication that's given. A lot of times we don't really see a lot of Motrin given. And one reason for that is Motrin can cause bleeding. A lot of patients on the floor, you know, not necessarily these patients that are detoxing, but other patients as well, they have, they're on a lot of blood thinners. So like heparin and um, Eliquis and stuff like that. Um, it thins out the blood and Motrin can actually make you bleed more. So um, we don't really see a lot of Motrin given, but it, it can be prescribed as well. Another part of the scoring is agitation and anxiousness. We're gonna ask the patient, and sometimes you don't even have to ask. You know, I noticed too, a lot of patients, they, they begin to roam around the floor. They don't just seem normal in a sense. You know, they, they pace it back and forth. You know, they start to start really fast. Um, and you just see that they're anxious. And sometimes you don't even have to ask these patients this stuff. You just know, you just can see it. Um, another question I want to ask is, do they have any tactile disturbances? So when we say tactile disturbances, we want to find out, do they have like pins and needles sensations in their hands and feet? Most of them do have pins and needles sensation in their hands and feet. And um, we do give medication for that as well. Um, and Requip is one of those things like for restless leg syndrome that they'll give. Auditory disturbances and visual disturbances. So this kind of goes on the line of hallucinations. Some patients have it so bad, the withdrawal symptoms that they have hallucinations. They're seeing things that aren't there. They're hearing things that aren't there. Um, and it could be to the point that it's so severe, but most patients for the, the most part of it, they don't have this main hallucinations. Um, but some patients do have DTs or delirium tremors, and these are the, like the severe, you know, hallucinations, like they're just not with it. So, and then the last question, we're gonna wanna know if their orientation, you know, are they alert orient times four, uh, times three, times two, times one, you know, like I said, most patients are alert and oriented. They know who they are, where they are, why they're there, all that good stuff, but some patients may not, okay? So these are typically some of the main signs that you're gonna see with patients who are going through uh, withdrawal symptoms. And I want you guys to be aware of it um, because these patients, they have to detox for at least, uh, at least five days or more. Um, at least five to seven days they need to be detoxed and then they may have to go to a, a long-term detox center. Some of them leave detox, they go back home and then they, they get back on the drugs that brought them in in the first place. So it's so important that, you know, as a nurse or a CNA or provider that we don't judge these patients depending on the color of their skin, their ethnicity, you know, what they're on, whether it's alcohol, opiates, because people... Um, they need help and and people some people are really suffering and 
So you have to go in there with an open mind and an open heart and pretty much a, a non-judgmental spirit because these people, they're in here because they need help. They're not in here to be judged. They're not in there to uh, be looked upon like, you know, just the scum of the earth because they're not. But these people, they're people just like us. You know, they have feelings, they have emotions. And it's just so important that we're looking out for, you know, their needs and their concerns as well because they're still patients, they're still people, they're still God's child. So I just want you guys to be aware of that. Uh, just remember one of the key things with withdrawal is that, that patients that come in with alcohol withdrawal symptoms are gonna be on Valium. And then those that come in on opiates are gonna be on phenobarbital. Sometimes the provider may prescribe the order of Valium. They may get, um, I've seen a lot of 10, milli 10 milligrams of Valium, which is a lot of, of Valium, you guys, a lot of Valium. And so um, typically they'll start to kind of titrate them down, or wean them off of it. So they may stop 10 milligrams of Valium, go down to five, and then because they can't go home on it. So they may get the Valium every hour, every 30 minutes. They may get the phenobarbital every 30 minutes, every hour. It just depends on the order. So I just want you guys to be aware of these common symptoms that you may find with alcohol withdrawal symptoms. I pray if you know someone who is going through withdrawal that they will make it through and that they will get the help that they need. And so remember you guys that God loves you and I love each and every one of you guys. And I want you guys to be blessed in Jesus' mighty name.